joy on the loneliest of nights. See, oh, sorry. Hello, everybody. My name is Ramon Isaac Barry from Mary Science Lab and Barry Science Lab. And today, we're going to be doing some centripetal force. Keep going. Okay, so what is centripetal force? Well, let's do some examples talking about it. But before that, let's just get used to the concept of centripetal force. Now, I proved in a past video that acceleration, centripetal acceleration, is v squared over r. And using the law, uh, net f is ma, we realize that fc simply m v squared over r. And why is it called centripetal force? Because it points at the center. Why does it point at the center of a circle, a circular path? Well, let's see. We have, well, let's say that the ball is at this point, then the ball is at this point. Now, we all know that the velocity uh, vectors are tangential. So now, let's take V2 over here and add it to V1. So now, you can see that the difference of these is essentially a downwards line, which points directly towards the center. Isn't that beautiful? All right. So now, let's get started with our ugly boogly. So, oh yeah, and just to note, if delta V points in one direction, then A will point in the same direction because A is proportional to delta V. For the same reason, if A points in one direction, F will point in the same direction. All right, so let's do a very tricky example for uh, this kind of stuff. So, what we're going to do is we have the Earth, right? And usually, we simply just assume that G is 9.8. Or sometimes when you're a buffoon taking an exam without a calculator, you assume that it's 10. But for now, we're going to use 9.8. So, here we have the earth, right? Well, if we have an apple or something standing on it, the earth itself, the thing is, the earth spins. So, let's say that the axis of the earth spinning was here. So, uh, I guess I could illustrate that in some way, but uh, I have better things to do. So, let me just put some crap over here. Okay, so... Now, this little apple is on the equator. So, what it's asking is, taking into account the Earth's spinning rate, and given that uh, the radius of Earth is 6.37 meters, uh, no, not meters per second, just meters uh, no, not 6.37 meters. I'm an idiot. 6.37 times 10 to the 6 meters. Given that, and given the mass is about 6 times 10 to the 24, no, I'm not using 5.98 because no one likes that number, we are going to try and find G naught, or absolute G. What's a G? Uh, a width. Uh, spinning taken into account. How do we find this absolute gravity and uh, absolute acceleration due to gravity? Well, it's pretty damn simple. We have mg is equal to g big M little m over r squared. Now cancel mantle and here's our absolute g equation. g big M over r squared. All right, so now using that formula, let's get right to it. Okay, so let's draw this planet again with the apple and realize that F naught is this force pulling down, but Fn is still our regular mg. So what we're gonna do to calculate uh, the difference between g and g naught is do Fn minus F naught is equal to, uh, and we're going to be using centripetal acceleration over here, so MAC or MV squared over R, 
because this is going towards the center of the earth so this is our net force rather this is our net force and now what we're going to do is this this is m g naught minus m regular g now using some magic max we can cancel out all of these m's leaving us with g naught minus g is equal to v squared over r how do we find the velocity of Earth spinning on the equator? Well, at the equator, the radius uh, over here is basically the same as Earth's total radius. So that would be 6.37 times 10 to the sixth. So that means if we have v squared over r, v squared over uh, v would be 2 pi r over big T. And what's T? Well, how long does the Earth take to do one full revolution? 24 auras. And you can convert that to seconds if you want to. I'm not going to do it because I'm not a human calculator. Don't trust the videos. You fell asleep over there, buddy? Okay. Sorry, you stupid. You should never fall asleep during a lecture. All right. So now let's square that and see what it gets us. Four? pi squared, r squared, over t squared. Plug it back in, we get g naught minus d. It's 4 pi squared, r squared, over t squared, r. Cancel, mantle, and we simply get 4, uh, the difference between g naught and g is 4 pi squared, r over t squared, which if you uh, do all of the uh, this math, this is 24 hours for your reference. And this is equal to 6.4 times 10 to the 6, or 6.37, I guess. Given all of those as reference, and, and the source here is, trust me, bro, the answer is about 0 0.034 meters per second squared. That is our answer to this absolutely stunning problem. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you in the next one.